Imagine being able to tell an AI agent exactly what kind of automation you want and have it build it for you. From drafting email responses to multi-agent systems. And then all you have to do is just sit back and watch it click around your browser, setting up the entire automation within your personal account. No searching through documentation and not even creating JSON files that you have to import into NADN. Thanks to a powerful new update, ChatGPT Operator now uses O3 behind the scenes instead of the old non-reasoning models. And what this means is it's way better at doing a lot of the tasks it's struggled with before, including being able to build workflows directly within your NADN account. With the right set of prompts, it can set up workflows to classify emails, even set up an AI agent with a variety of tools, as well as build very basic multi-agent systems. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use ChatGPT Operator to accomplish this. A tool I generally passed judgment on months before and never looked at again until recently. You can think about what I'm about to show you as yet another science experiment, but one that shows real promise. And while it's not perfect yet, and it's still super slow, overall, this will show you the potential of where this technology can take us in the future, where AI doesn't just have the ability to write prompts for you, but it can build, configure, deploy, and even test an entire workflow without you ever having to touch a keyboard. If I've piqued your interest, stick with me, and we'll dive right in. Now, if you don't even know what ChatGPT Operator is, when you log into ChatGPT, you'll be able to see this thing called Operator. And what Operator can do is when you click on it, it'll show you a sample screen that gives you a list of different tasks you can do. For example, you could do buy four tickets to Kendrick Lamar, it'll go to StubHub, go on the website, look for the best seats or the seats you're looking for, and add it to your cart. You can do all kinds of these more admin logistics activities. Now I'll walk through how Operator works behind the scenes briefly, but before we get to theory, I wanna prove that this can work. So this is the most basic and simple application of Operator for this use case, but I just wanted to show you how vague of a prompt you can give it and what kind of result you can yield within a short amount of time. And instead of making you sit through the entire workflow, which took around 28 seconds, we'll just play it at 2x speed. So you'll see here it logs in, it creates the workflow, it then navigates to name the workflow, then it goes on the pane, tries to find the schedule trigger, then adds and looks for Gmail, decides which of the steps makes the most sense, which in this case was the search, and then actually clicks on search, and then writes exactly what the search term is that I'm looking for, and then it drafts out this very basic workflow. Now this definitely isn't rocket science, and yes, you could probably do this yourself just as quickly, if not quicker. But what's the big advancement here is that literally months ago, three, four months ago, this was practically impossible with the old version of Operator. And now it's twice, if not three times the speed, and it's way more accurate because it's streaming in real time. It has reasoning capability to better consider what it's seeing on screen. So now it's able to look at that pane, look through the different options it has at its disposal and pick the right one for the job. Now, before we move on to the next more advanced use cases of using operator, I just want to walk you through how it works at a 50,000 foot view so that if you're not aware, you're able to just get on the same plane as me so we can better understand how this works and what the limitations are. So essentially when you use operator, it takes some big task and then it breaks it down into small atomic parts. These atomic parts are then categorized as to, is this something that I have to go and click on to get to? Do I have to scroll? Do I have to type? Do I have to do a combination of all of them? So it tries to break down an overall ambitious prompt that you have into the piece part actions that would get you to the web page or to the form you're looking for. In terms of its vision capability, it's using O3 and its image capability to look at almost at a pixel by pixel level and put the cursor exactly at a certain coordinate on the page where it makes the most sense to go for the next natural step. So if you're asking, let's say, log into any then, it should be able to navigate to that web page and then see at the top right is some form of login button and then it will literally position the cursor by the coordinates on the screen and then initiate the click icon and it's basically rendering its own browser within the screen. It's not your actual browser, it's their version of their browser that you can then use to log into your account. Now, if you're hearing this and your ears are perking up saying this is a security risk, then absolutely what you can do is you can create a dummy account and then build the workflows there and then just download the JSONs and import them to your main account. So if that's something that concerns you, you could totally do that there. And like I said, once it decides where this action needs to occur, it then initiates those actions through either typing, clicking or a combination of both again. The part here where it becomes an art to write the right prompts for operator is the way it manages its different tasks because 
it can get overwhelmed pretty easily because it's clicking on a series of screens, there's a lot of things happening, and you can imagine with something that can get as messy as an NNN workflow, you have to remind it in a way to try to use the tidy up function so it can keep looking at the workflow in a way that makes the most sense and not just get confused with the spaghetti on screen. If you wanted a TLDR of what the process looks like, it looks very similar to this at a high level. So you have some form of screenshot that is captured and then it tries to look for the GUI elements or basically the user interface elements that are the most relevant or pertinent to be able to click on or use to get to the goal. So what it does is it takes a look at the elements on screen and then it takes the best possible decision it can with the little information it has to click make some form of action. Based on that action, you get some form of output. So you get basically some stimuli. Based on that stimuli, you screenshot what the result of that action was, and then we keep going in this endless loop until it thinks it's gone to your goal. Now, just because we're using a reasoning model and not using a non-reasoning model doesn't mean this is perfect. One thing you'll notice that if you don't have really bespoke tight prompts is it will tend to navigate away from the NNN screen and go straight to a browser, or it'll keep exiting the NNN workflow and restarting over and over again, just taking around 30 minutes to do practically nothing. So after spending hours taking the actual video output and loading it into Google Gemini so I can analyze the video, I was able to put together prompts that were a lot better at keeping it on task and focused. Now after hours of trial and error, this is a general structure that you can take into account when you're creating prompts specifically for operator agent. So the prompt starts off here saying, your mission is to construct a sophisticated AI agent within NADEN. And next you say, this agent will serve as the central intelligence for insert role. So this could be for a digital marketing agency, for real estate brokerage, insert whatever the vertical of the company is here or what you're trying to accomplish. Your task is to assemble the necessary components, connect them correctly, and arm the agent with a specified tool set for marketing operations. Now, because I'm mentioning arm the agent, I am skewing this part to focus on the AI agent module in NADEN, but you could easily remove that and just say, I want you to take the necessary components, connect them correctly, and then pick the right tools or the nodes to be able to build this workflow from A to Z. So in terms of rules or heuristics, I tell it to maintain a clean workspace. And you'll see if you go into NADEN on the bottom left hand side, you have a paintbrush icon. You can always click on that paintbrush to make sure that your automation nodes are always aligned properly. And especially with something like operator, it will tend to stack all the different nodes on top of each other. So naturally, if it's using a screenshot to capture what's happening, it's not going to know that they're disconnected, they're the wrong nodes, etc. So having it constantly try to click and clean things up will allow it to take screenshots that give it the feedback loop that things look good or don't look good. And the next one is correct component connection. So sometimes it's going to be imperfect and it will create an AI agent module and it'll hook up three of the four tools, but one of the tools will just be floating in space. And the last one is staying on task. So obviously beneath each one of these categories, I have some sub bullets in my core prompts but these are the main overarching values. And then in terms of the agent assembly blueprint, this is where you wanna specify, okay, so I want you to create a chat trigger or I want you to put a trigger that when I click on the workflow, it will send it to the AI agent and then it will use things like monday.com or Salesforce or Zoom. And then you start telling it kind of what kind of tools you're looking for so that it can then open up the pane, search Zoom and click on Zoom, see all the possible nodes or actions it has at its disposal, and it can use its judgment using O3 to hook it up back to the AI agent. All right, so that's enough theory. We'll go back and go through the remaining use cases, which should be way more impressive than the first one I showed you. All right, so for the very first one, we're gonna go through my very in-depth prompt here, step by step, and I will make this available to you in the first link in the description below. For the remaining ones, I put my blood, sweat, and tears into hours of going back and forth with Gemini watching the actual footage. So those are gonna be exclusively for my community members that you can find in the second link in the description below. So if we go into this Google Doc here, we'll zoom in and we'll read through a lot of this prompt. So like I said, you give it a core mission. So your only goal is to build an AnyDen workflow using a strict two-phase process. You will first build the entire workflow structure by adding and connecting all nodes, phase one. Only after the structure is complete will you configure and rename each node because sometimes if it has multiple, let's say, OpenAI steps, it'll call it OpenAI and it'll call the other one OpenAI1. So nothing really meaningful. So this method is mandatory to ensure clean and correct results. 
So then I give it some universal rules, like I said before, on the actual sticky, stay on the NNN tab, manage on the canvas, report all errors, follow all my instructions directly, and then we get into the AI workflow blueprint. So in this case, I did use AI to generate this workflow blueprint for me. I went into perplexity. You can use anything that has a search capability and say, I want to build this workflow. Walk me through what nodes I would need in NNN to do that. And then I used AI to help me build this. So it said, create new workflow, add Gmail step, click add first step, search for Gmail and select the Gmail node, select the trigger on message received, return to canvas, do not configure anything else. And then add first open AI node. Now this is a little trick here. You must select the node named simply OpenAI. Do not select OpenAI chat model. Now, if you go to any den, you're going to see that you have both OpenAI and then you have OpenAI chat model. It will tend to think that it should use the chat model all the time, even though the best thing to use is just OpenAI and click something like send message. So these are the small nuances that as you see how it behaves and you watch the video playback, you can spot its errors or actually you can take the video, download it, upload it to something like Google Gemini, which can ingest videos and ask it, audit everything that went wrong and give me a cheat sheet that I can use to make my prompt better. Or you can even make it more simple. Take my prompt and make it better seeing all the errors that this agent did. Now, next one, you can say, add second opening I node, click the sign, repeat the instructions, return to the canvas, kind of same idea then add the final Gmail node and then verify that it's fitting to screen. And then in the second phase, we go into configuring all of the triggers, renaming them if it makes sense, entering any expressions or JSON that might be relevant, right? Because since you're using a language model and it sees exactly what you're trying to accomplish, instead of just uploading a JSON file and asking it to read through it, it literally sees the workflow on screen. So it can take a pretty good guess at whatever JSON is needed in the in and end workflow. So we do the same thing for the second OpenAI node, and then you configure the final Gmail node here. Again, I didn't write any of this myself. I just had AI write it for me, and I just pasted it in, and I saw what happened. And at the very end, I said, rename the entire workflow to this, activate it, and then you're done. And with that prompt, we got something like this, that again, we're gonna play at 2x speed, it's gonna go through, bring on the on message received, pull over the right results, then pull over the OpenAI. Now it's knowing how to use the right OpenAI model, not the OpenAI chat model. In this case, it's gonna then add the last part here, which is sending the message. And if you're looking at this saying, Mark, I could literally do this myself in half the time. I know the idea is if this is where we are right now, what happens in three to six months when this is three, five, 10 times the speed, way faster, it can do it for you and can run the entire workflow because technically, if you set up all the credentials and the JSON and it can correct its work, it could theoretically put it to active, actually run it and see whether or not it gets errors and try and troubleshoot those errors for you. So we're not too far from that being a tangible, realistic outcome from using something like an operator. And after it's finished up, it is renaming all of the nodes. So now you see classify email and draft reply. It's picking the model GPT-4.0 and then it's setting the actual automation to active. And because this is super simple, this should actually run in one shot. For the next one, we're finally tackling the AI agent module and we'll read the very first part of the prompt together. So I said, your primary task is to assemble a sophisticated context aware AI agent in NADN. This agent will act as the, an assistant for real estate brokerage. This requires equipping it with comprehensive set of tools like monday.com, ClickUp, and you must follow the phased assembly process. And in this case, it looks very similar in, in structure to what we had before where I give it a series of rules. I say, make sure to use the tidy up canvas, which is this button right here to keep cleaning things up. And this is super important when you're building an AI agent workflow, because as you add all these tools, they go on top of each other and it will inevitably lose track of what it's doing. And the key thing here is you always want to tell it ideally what tools you're using. So it knows which nodes to look for and which ones to optimize for. And once again, it creates the workflow. It looks for the chat trigger because I coached it really well on that. It looks for the AI agent module. Now we're not creating a custom prompt for now. We could totally add that as a stretch goal. It adds open AI, it adds simple memory, it then clicks on the screen endlessly and finally looks for monday.com, selects which option would make the most sense based on my requirements, then looks for the next uh, monday.com node and it keeps going and then it'll keep adding the click up. So we'll jump towards that last part. So now it's adding click up and notice it just tidied things up so it can take a better look at the screen. It adds yet another tool 
There we go. And then it tidies it up again. Now in this case, I told it not to configure the credentials or anything like that, but you could have everything pre-configured so that all of this technically again could run by the end of the run. And it's honestly just two minutes and 15 seconds. Whereas this used to take 15 to 20 minutes to barely go on a website and book you a ticket or add a flight to a cart. So we are making leaps and bounds in advancements by the day. Now this next one might look very similar in structure. But in terms of my instruction, it's very different. So instead of telling it what tools to use, I gave it autonomy to decide what tools make the most sense given the circumstance. So again, if we take a look at the initial snippet here, your primary objective is to act as an AI solutions architect. Your goal is to navigate NNN, log in, then design and build a powerful autonomous AI agent for lead generation agency. You will not be given explicit list of tools. Instead, you must use a specific discovery heuristic to identify, select, and assemble the most appropriate tool set for the job. And then I give it that set of rules again, and I give it some more convoluted instructions on what it should go for. So this time I'm putting control in its hands to decide what makes the most sense. So in this case, again, we're doing the same thing. We're adding that chat trigger. It adds the AI agent module. And this time it's gonna be using O3 to not only worry about what's on screen, but also worry about what is the most logical set of tools for a lead generation agency. So you'll see here it struggles a bit to hook up the chat module. It keeps clicking around. So this will happen quite a bit. And I wanna show you the imperfections because this is not perfect by any means. It then hooks these up progressively, it takes a bit of time. It ties things up to see what's going on on screen. It adds the search API and that looks a little bit better. And then we'll jump into what it looks like in the next 15 to 20 seconds. So at this point, it now tidies things up. It puts all the tools together. And the only thing remaining for it is to just hook up the outlandish little nodes on the screen on the canvas and hook them up to the underlying agent. And last but not least, I wanted to tackle making a multi-agent, very basic, but a multi-agent workflow. Again, not being necessarily provided with what tools it should use or the logic it should use, but knowing that it should have multiple agents. So if we zoom in, it says the dual marketing agent core mission. Your primary task is to build a sophisticated two agent and then workflow. The first agent, the prompt engineer, will refine a user's request through the chat trigger. Its output will then be passed to a second specialized agent called the PRD writer or the product requirements document, which will execute the refined prompt and save the result to Airtable. You must follow the phased assembly process precisely. And then in this case, we go through step-by-step step what needs to happen for this to basically put this together. So let's take a look at the video and finish off with that. So I'll skip ahead post chat trigger to see how it interacts with the agents. So you'll see here, it knows that we have to add two sets of agents, but each agent needs its own tool and memory. So it then adds the air table. It basically carries through the end before it worries about the rest of the tools. So now after it did a tidy up, it adds memory to both, cleans up again, adds chat model, should add memory again. And then it goes through to rename the actual AI agents themselves. There we go. And you could, again, make it so that the underlying agents need to have prompts that are configured. It can then write the prompts for you. In this case, we're just worrying about chat input to make this a very straightforward demo, but it'll just double check and make sure those inputs are the same. And once it's ready to go, let me see here, it'll open it. It goes back and forth and it actually ends up writing a prompt for the second one, taking the input of the first agent and basically optimizing it for the second agent and then saving the workflow and we're pretty much ready to use it outside of double checking that credential for Airtable. And that's pretty much it. So yes, this is yet another mad scientist experiment. You could probably build these workflows in half the time just doing it yourself if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know how to use NNN, this could be a great gateway drug to help you getting the creative juices flowing on building workflows. But what's more important for me to convey to you is that in three to six months, we will be in a place where you could technically let AI take control of your screen, set up your automations, test them, and you can not only do this with NNN, you can use this with make.com, with Zapier, any platform that has a procedure of steps, you can replicate the same process. Once again, you'll find the first prompt I showed you in the link in the description below if you wanna use it as inspiration and repurpose it. And for the remaining prompts, 
All of them, along with a few other experiments we're going to do in the community, will be in my early AI adopters community that you can find in the second link in the description below. And no, it's not just this kind of experiment. We have all kinds of mad scientist experiments that I do on a daily basis, educating from anything from any then to doing agentic rag to using make.com to voice agents and everything you can imagine under the AI sun. And with that, I'll see you next time.